Samsung's One UI software skin has come a long, long way over the years to a point where I'm just gonna come out and say it, it is hands down my favorite software skin that you can get on a phone. And with One UI 8, it's even better than ever. Like, let's start with this brand new adaptive clock on the lock screen here. To set this up, all you gotta do is long press your lock screen, then unlock, then tap the clock here. And once you do that, you'll see this new option here. And once you enable it, as long as you're using an appropriate wallpaper that has some sort of prominent foreground element like this D here, then it should work straight away. You can then adjust the size of the clock as needed. You can also move it around and you'll see it adapt to the shape of that foreground element. You can then make it thinner or bolder. And if you come to this style tab, you can also change it to this vertical layout, which will also adapt to your wallpaper. But I find this layout a little finicky, so I prefer using the horizontal option instead. I mean, if nothing else, I think this might be my favorite new feature of One UI 8. But then check this out. If I jump back into editing mode here, we can now tap on the fingerprint sensor icon and boom, we've now got a bunch of different options that we can select from to customize the unlock animation. Now you do need the updated version of the Lockstar module installed for this to work, which is available via the Goodlock app. And right now we only have four custom options to choose from on top of the default option. And I reckon we could do with some more fluid style options rather than these cartoony ones, but at least the options there now, and I reckon we'll see plenty more going forward. Oh, and by the way, did you know that you can also tap this lock icon up here and tweak its style and color like so? You can even change the icon to your own custom images if you like, or there's my personal favorite option, completely hiding the thing, which results in such a clean looking lock screen. And speaking of hiding things, who remembers the good old days with One UI 6 and older, where we used to be able to completely hide the lock screen clock? Well, the good news is that there's still a way to do so, it's just the way to do it is now kind of hidden. All you need is the clock face module, again, available within the Good Lock app. And with that open, you just tap this plus icon here, then tap the trash can icon to delete the clock element. Then we just need to tap the plus icon and tap text. And then we just leave this as blank and hit the save icon. With that done, we can now come back to our lock screen, then long press and then unlock to enter back into our editing mode. Then we just need to tap the clock, then come over to the style tab here, then swipe along until you find our clock face options and your recently saved blank variant should be the most recent here. So I can just tap it and there you go. We now have a completely blank clock, which means we can now go ahead and use something like KLWP to create a really cool depth effect for our lock screen. And if you wanna see how to do this in detail, then I'll link to the full tutorial up in the cards and down below. But then back to our Lockstar module again, just two other tweaks worth mentioning here, which is that firstly, if you tap here where it says Lockstar and tap where it says Lock Screen Timeout, you can actually increase the length of time it takes for the lock screen to turn itself off so that it matches your default display timeout setting, which for me is 10 minutes. And I actually use this all the time when filming these sorts of videos. So there you go. And then finally for the Lockstar module, if you tap here where it says Always On Display, you can actually now have a completely different clock compared to your lock screen clock. And you can also use this mode to line up widgets and stickers and so forth. Although keep in mind, they'll still be visible on your lock screen. But as you can see, there are a heap of fun new changes available for your lock screen with this new update. You just gotta know where to look. All right, from there, let's unlock the phone and talk about the home screen. And oh my goodness, where do we even begin? Because there are just so many new tricks to unpack. Let's start with good old home screen customization. And we can't talk about that topic on One UI without talking about the mother of all customization apps, the Home Up module. If you haven't heard of it, this is yet another module available within the Goodlock app. And it was already jam packed with amazing options on One UI 7, but with this newest version, it's even more feature packed. Firstly, if you jump into this home screen section, we now have this long overdue addition called Use Settings Dialog on Home Screen. With this enabled, instead of having to open up the Good Lock app to then jump into the Home Up module every single time, now we can quickly access relevant Home Up settings right where they should be. So there's a shortcut here on the home screen, there's a shortcut here in the app drawer, and there's even a shortcut in the Recents panel as well. Now as for new customization options within the module, well, there are just so many great ones, but we're gonna start with my personal favorite, this DIY home screen option. Now, this was actually already available on One UI 7, but when it first launched, I kind of just thought it was this super niche feature that would let you make funky looking home screen setups. But then just recently, I actually decided to give it a whirl on my S25 and realized that when used strategically, 
it is actually such an amazing tool that unlocks literally any home screen grid layout that you can think of, meaning instead of my custom home screen layout looking like this, where there's just slightly too much space between the rows of icons and that weather widget, now it can look like this. And with the One UI 8 update, it's way easier to use than before. So as long as you've enabled the option within the Home Up module, you can then swipe home and long press your home screen and you'll then see the DIY option up here. You tap that to enter DIY mode and before it was a matter of just hoping for the best that your icons were kinda in alignment. But now not only can you tap multiple items and then group them together using this icon here, which keeps them locked in their alignment forever until you ungroup them, but with any item or group selected, we now have this little floating option here, which when tapped, lets us use these arrows to very precisely move our items where we wanna move them. No more dragging and hoping, now we've got precision. On top of that, if you press this smiley face here, you still have the option to add stickers like we did before, but now if we tap this little icon here, we can actually set up our stickers to launch into any app of our choosing, which is a seriously cool option. Or if you don't want that, we can just jump back into DIY mode, then tap on our created sticker, then on that icon again, and you can instead tap here where it says attractive and select from this list of animations. And with one of those selected, it'll play that animation whenever you tap it on your home screen. Just loads and loads of fun. Now I'm not much of a sticker guy, so I'm gonna long press, then tap the trash icon to remove that. But check out this next hidden trick. You might have noticed that there's no page indicator icons down here, unlike my previous One UI home screen setups, and that's thanks to a brand new addition to the Home Up app. You can access it by long pressing, then by tapping on Home Up, and you just make sure that this toggle is enabled, and boom, those pesky home page indicator icons are no more. And this is a feature that I've been asking the Home Up team to add for a while now, and now that they've added it, it means we're able to create essentially any sort of home screen setup that we so desire. Like as far as I'm concerned, the One UI launcher is now actually better than pretty much all third party launchers. Plus because it's the default launcher, it also preserves maximum fluidity too, particularly when using gestural navigation. Then speaking of fluidity, with the last Home Up update, we got access to this incredible home gesture animation tuning option, which allows users to dive in and customize the app closing animations to their heart's content, which is amazing in and of itself. But with the One UI 8 update, we now have another new option here that allows us to customize the app opening animations. With this enabled, you get either this simple tuning option, which basically just allows you to customize the speed. And by the way, I find that moderate is the best balance of speed and fluidity. Or there's also this advanced tuning option, which gives you a ridiculous amount of control over every element of the animation, which can seem very daunting, but it's also a heck of a lot of fun. I think Samsung was basically like, you guys keep complaining about the way that we tune the animation. So here, you can do it. And you know what? I freaking love that we have this amount of control. There's also this brand new section called Blur Animation Tuning, which is a really cool new addition that allows us to enable or disable or even change the levels of blur that occur during our app opening and closing animations. And depending on the wallpaper that you're using, enabling the wallpaper option might result in things looking a little janky. So I tend to leave that off, but I do enjoy enabling the icon blur option and then setting the blur level to thick and it's kind of hard to see it straight away, but if you look close, you will see your home screen icons blurring ever so slightly when you launch or close an app. And it just adds yet another very subtle, but nice layer of class to an OS that is only becoming more and more polished with each and every update. All right, quick break from the tricks because there's a little gadget that I've been using lately that you just got to know about, which is called the Inu Pocket Rocket P50. And a big thanks to Inu for sponsoring this video. Now, despite its compact size, which is seriously about the same as a pair of AirPods Pro, this thing actually packs in a whopping 10,000 milliamp hour battery, which is enough to charge most phones at least twice. And what really makes it stand out is the speed. It pushes a genuine 45 watts of power, including full support for Samsung's super fast charging 2.0, which is the fastest charging speed available on flagship Galaxy devices out right now. So whether it's your phone, a tablet, or even a smaller laptop, you'll get seriously fast top ups. It also has this built-in USB-C cable that doubles as a lanyard, and you can even fully remove the cable if you like. And I mean, who doesn't love a tiny USB-C cable that itself supports 60 watts fast charging? But having it always attached like this is a seriously underrated feature because it means as long as you bring the power bank, 
you'll be able to charge. There's a digital display for real-time battery info, plus it comes with a three-year warranty, and it's 100% safe for air travel, being fully TSA compliant. So if you want a power bank that doesn't weigh down your pockets, but still packs a punch, check out the Pocket Rocket P50 using the first link down in the description below. All right, here's a super simple trick that I actually mentioned way back in my 17 hidden One UI 7 features video last year, but that apparently everyone forgot about, which is in relation to the quick settings panel. You see, by default, One UI 7 and now One UI 8, it actually separates the quick settings and notification panels into two separate pages, which you can then swipe between like this, but a lot of people, myself included, don't love that. Well, it's Samsung we're talking about here, folks, so of course, we have an option to set it back. You just open the quick settings panel, tap the pencil icon here, then tap panel settings, change this setting here from separate to together, and that's it. Now, when we get out of that and come back to our home screen, you'll see that a single swipe down shows us our traditional collapsed quick settings panel with any notifications below, and then a second swipe will show the expanded quick settings panel. Happy days. Then if you're someone like me who rarely uses the edge panel feature that's been around for donkey years now, there's actually a couple of hidden settings that have been added with this new update that might just pique your interest. So with the feature enabled, if you swipe in and tap the pencil icon here, then tap the three dots up here, we now have this new more customizations button down here, which unlocks some really handy new features. So this includes letting you see more of your favorite apps without scrolling or unlocking the ability to scroll through the recent app section to see more recent apps. And then my favorite option is this one that lets you change how apps are launched via the edge panel. And if you select this pop-up screen view option, now whenever you launch an app via the edge panel, it'll go straight to this pop-up mode, which I reckon is a game changer. Okay, here's a cool one, these new predictive back gesture animations. Now, funnily enough, Google actually first introduced this feature with Android 13, but they were disabled by default and users had to enable them under the developer settings. But even Samsung had the feature also available via the developer settings with One UI 6 based on Android 14. But then the option was completely gone with One UI 7. Well, with One UI 8, it's back and better than ever, but for some reason, it's still disabled by default. So to enable it, you just come into your settings, then swipe down and open this advanced feature section, then tap on labs and enable this back swipe preview option. And that's it. You'll now see a preview of what you're swiping back to before you actually complete the swipe, as long as the app supports the feature. I love this. Another new feature with One UI 8 is the brand new quick share interface. Beforehand, you could only really access quick share via your system share sheet and tapping on the quick settings icon would only let you change your sharing settings. Well, now if we tap the quick share icon, we get a brand new full screen interface. And this means if you come to this send page, you can now share files directly from here. And I think this really improves its efficiency. This now brief feature also got a really nice update with One UI 8 to where I can actually see myself using it from time to time now. So if you come into the settings app and then open this Galaxy AI section, then scroll down and open up the now brief section. If you tap on this content to include option, you'll see that there's a few new options that are actually disabled by default, including parking spot reminders, text messages, and they also changed the YouTube shorts option to a full blown YouTube option, which when enabled will prompt you to sign in with your account. But this means you should now see much more relevant YouTube video suggestions down here, although no clue why it's showing me my own videos at the moment. And here's a really cool Samsung app that I had no idea existed until I saw someone recommend it on Twitter called Galaxy Enhance X. And it's available to download for free via the Galaxy App Store. And the great thing about it is that it's not a One UI 8 exclusive. It also works on older software versions too. But this app is like the all-in-one solution for anyone looking to enhance their images and videos. You just import an image and then pretty much any AI enhancement that you can think of will be there ready for you to make use of straight away. So you can remove reflections or blur, you can fix lens distortion, or you can even just tap the magic button and let the app figure out the fixes for you. But there's even this new option called camera shift, which when enabled, essentially lets you artificially adjust the camera angle to make your subject look taller or shorter. Although results may vary, but it's seriously wild stuff. And then we have a brand new good lock module called Display Assistant, which unlocks a heap of really handy tweaks related to your phone's display. And a lot of these are features that I used to install third-party apps for, and oftentimes they required root access to use. And so the fact that they're now system level is seriously wild. So you'll find the module towards the bottom of the Good Luck app, and it's still labeled as in beta, but with it open, the first feature that I wanted to highlight is found under this screen timeout section, and it basically allows us to set different display timeout durations on an app-by-app -app basis. 
So let's say you wanna have your screen's timeout set to a minute by default most of the time, but then you want the display to stay on longer when using Google Chrome, for example. All you need to do is just tap this plus icon here, then scroll down and select the Chrome app, tap add, then select your custom screen timeout duration, which I'll set to 10 minutes, for example. You can even enable this auto dim option if you wanna preserve some battery while still having the feature enabled. But with that done, now whenever I open Google Chrome, the display timeout duration will change to 10 minutes, but then as soon as I close it, it'll revert back to my system default. But if we open Display Assistant back up and come back, we've also got this new adaptive brightness option, which allows you to speed up or slow down how fast the display's brightness will automatically adjust depending on the environment that you're in. So if you ever pull your phone out of your pocket and find that the display takes too long to brighten up, well now you can actually speed that up by increasing this slider here, which is seriously amazing. There's also this refresh rate option here, which allows you to save some battery life by restricting the display's refresh rate to 60 Hertz on an app by app basis. So for example, let's say you're a big user of the Amazon Kindle app. You really don't need the display sitting at 120 Hertz in that context. So you can just add it to this list here, which will restrict the display to 60 Hertz whenever that app is open, thereby saving you some battery life. And then last, but absolutely not least, we have this brand new screen curtain feature, which is essentially like a third party app that I featured on the channel a number of times over the years called Black Screen, but now it's system level, where once activated, it will basically place a low power, always on display style overlay on top of the screen without putting the app you had running underneath it to sleep. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't work with YouTube or YouTube music, so no background playback work around using this feature, although the black screen app does work for this purpose in case you're looking to do such a thing. But for example, this is an app that I use all the time to watch sports, but it does not support background playback. So in theory, I can use the screen curtain feature to essentially listen to games while the display is effectively off, which is really cool. But there you have it, 20 hidden tricks that I'm hoping will help you to make the most of your Samsung device. If you enjoyed the video, then a sub would be greatly appreciated. But aside from that, thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you later.